coming up on Dream of Italy. Mamma mia. We visit Rome and find the Eternal City has never been better. I'm Kathy McKay. In this series, we'll meet the authentic characters, uncover the hidden treasures, and discover what makes Italy the most fascinating country in the world. Join me as we dream of Italy. In Rome, 2,000 years of history collide into the present. Every era has left its mark, from the emperors who once ruled the world to the Renaissance popes and princes who built St. Peter's Basilica and countless other monuments. Rome is full of life and energy. It's a city always on display. Its cracks and crumbling facades only make it more beautiful. The Eternal City, La Cita Eterna. I never get tired of Rome. It is my favorite place in the whole world. Like all Italians, Romans are obsessed with food. As one meal ends, the next one is planned and discussed and argued about. And for many people, the meal starts in the market. It's here that the seasonal produce is presented in mouth-watering displays. The Campo dei Fiori Market in central Rome is one of the oldest in the city and is a must for neighborhood residents and tourists. But I want to see where the average Roman buys their food. I head to the old working class neighborhood of Testaccio, named for the broken amphora or pottery jars that were thrown from Roman ships 2,000 years ago. Okay. Local resident Alessandro Volpetti shows me around his family's alimentari or delicatessen. Ecco, okay. They have a dizzying selection. We have fried zucchini, fried artichoke, fried ricotta. We have the Vesuvio, my father's invention. It's yeah. a, basically, it's a smoked mozzarella Whoa. filled with ham, then fried, okay? Wow, heart attack. <laughs> Then you have the famous uh, burrata, okay? Oh, yeah. You have the mozzarella di bufala. Here all the fresh, fresh cheese. And then we have uh, oh, truffles. truffles. Oh, so these are the black truffles. These are the black truffles. Quite good to prepare a sauce for pasta or uh, on eggs or to prepare a frittata. Then here you have uh, the salami, typical of Easter. Easter breakfast is wrong, it's based on uh, salamis. Okay. Mm? Because uh, as in the past during the qual you were supposed not to eat meat because of the religious reasons. So there's still the tradition in the Sunday morning of Easter to make a big breakfast based on salamis. Wow. I ask him about a particular ham on the wall. Curatello is the it's the best part of the leg of the pork. It's the, just the central part of the rear leg of the pork, which is aged separately. Mm? And normally you dip in wine before you slicing it, because it enhances the, the flavor, the, the smell of the, of the culatelli. After the shop, we go to the local market, which recently moved from an historic outdoor square to a modern building. While not as picturesque as Campo di Fiori, this is where true Romans go to shop. So, Alessandro, what do Romans like to eat? Well, uh, one of my favorite dishes are the puntarelle. Okay, puntarelle. puntarelle. It's basically it's the stem of the chicory that you peel it and then you, you season uh, with anchovies and uh, garlic. You smash the anchovies and the garlic and you mix with olive oil. And you have this nice sauce you put on puntarelle. It's something you find only in Rome. Only in Rome. They, they grow it outside the city from the countryside around Rome. Here's the puntarelle. She will show us how, 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 to, how to prepare the puntarelle, oh, okay? Excellent. Allora, come si preparano? You peel it one by one. Normally, everybody uses like a special tool for preparing it, but she do it the ancient way, just with a knife, with the okay? Knife. This part of the market is just fish. You can say it by the smell. <laughs> The fish vendor is a big-hearted guy named Luciano. Nice to meet 
volentieri. Thank you, so what kind of fish is this? Allora, questo è un pesce, un esemplare di merluzzo imperiale. Mm -hmm. Merluzzo imperiale. Questo come si cucina? Come lo facciamo? Questo lo facciamo, diciamo, bollito. Ah, olio, olio e limone. Spinato, olio e limone. Prezzemolo, diventa... Mm. Un lemon and olive oil. And a little bit of parsley. Mm? And what, about, what else is popular here? Rombo questo si fa con le patate al forno. Sì, si fa con le patate al forno. Baked in the oven, yes. Ho oh, tutto bello. Oh, C'è tutto bello, everything is nice. Rome is mainly famous for a pecorino. Mm? Because for cacio e pepe. For cacio e pepe, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Because in the Roman dialect, cacio means cheese. So cacio in Rome is, is pecorino. You don't have to specify that it's pecorino when you say cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe is made with pecorino romano, Everybody black knows. pepper. Yeah, yes. exactly. Which is quite simple as ingredients. Not so easy to prepare because you have to master it. Uh, you have to mix the pecorino with the black pepper, add a little bit of olive oil to prepare like a, like a sauce. sauce. But be sure not to put any cream in it, okay? No cream. <laughs> no cream, no cream please. Of course not. All that food on display is making me hungry, so I decide to find a place to get some of that legendary Roman pasta dish, cacio e pepe. And I know just the place. On a narrow side street in the Trastevere neighborhood, Da Enzo has been serving cacio e pepe since 1929. Some claim it makes the best in the city. The Di Felice brothers, Roberto and Francesco, own the restaurant, which they bought from the original family that founded it. They maintain the classic style of a Roman osteria, while sticking to a philosophy of only buying the best ingredients. The formula is definitely working. <laughs> Hoping to discover the secret, I come back the next night for a lesson in how to make a perfect cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe è una delle, piane, delle paste più antiche, anche quelle più semplici della tradizione romana. Nasce dai pastori che avevano sempre con sé un pezzo di cacio che potevano portare in giro, quindi avevano sempre un bel pezzo di, di pecorino, con, pecorino e quindi la, riuscivano con pochissimi ingredienti, pecorino, un po' di, di pasta e un po' di pepe, riuscivano a farsi da mangiare. Il principio è molto molto buono. Allora questo innanzitutto è il pecorino a prendere ah, questi, sì, sì. vai, in fila, piano eh, piano, 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 aiuto, sei bravissima, <ride> grazie, adesso abbiamo aperto, vediamo, Perfetto. la parte più nobile è la parte centrale, per mantenerlo questo ha bisogno di sale, sì. oh, quindi al centro il sale non arriva, è quello è meno salato, mm. non mangiate troppo però, eh. mm. <ride> Adesso togliamo questa cosa che tanto l'abbiamo visto. Una volta che abbiamo aperto questo diviso in pezzi, lo andiamo a macinare. Per fare la nostra cacio e pepe, prendiamo un contenitore. Sì. Mettiamo dell'acqua fredda. Cold water. Esatto. Un po' di pepe. Sì. Ok. Ok. Poi mettiamo. Prendi. Brava. Così. Stop. Ah. Noi dobbiamo creare una sorta di malta. Quindi anche la consistenza è molto importante. Il cacio e pepe, come tutta la cucina diciamo, italiana, sì. si fa con il cuore, con amore. Sì, è l'ingrediente fondamentale. È, è, lì... è un po' di crazy. Mi fa di pazzia. So, one part love, one part heart, esatto. one part crazy. Esatto. Yeah. Okay. Va bene? Okay. 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 ok. Dopodiché prendiamo la pasta. Adesso la mettiamo dentro, basta. Okay. A little bit of... Vai. A little bit of water. Vai. Vai. Oh, ci siamo salvati. Tutto bene? Tutto bene quel che finisce bene. Adesso il lavoro è importantissimo. È qui che si fa la cacio e pepe. Devi ruotare. Devi ruotare velocemente. Prendi tutto l'esterno, prendi tutto l'esterno, okay. prendi tutto l'esterno. Ti do una botarella io. Ti spiace? Sì, sì. Un po' più oh, veloce. Noi abbiamo questa situazione. Lo mettiamo qui. E questo è la nostra cacio e pepe. Ti do a te l'onore di dare un po' di pecorino finale sopra e adesso un po' di magia con il pepe finale. Adesso lo devi soltanto assaggiarla. Com'è? Mm, perfetto. It's the best cacio and pepe I've ever had.
You have to tell me yes. what is the secret. Un segredo, non si dice. <laughs> but I came all the way to Rome. Allora, ti posso to dire. find out. Poi c'è l'ingrediente fondamentale che non vi posso dire, che è tanto amore. <laughs> and if the crowds are any proof, that love is working just fine. One of the truly incredible things about Rome is how easy it is to see vestiges of the ancient empire that once ruled the known world. Everywhere you turn, another monument appears. Among the most impressive is the Pantheon. It is 2,000 years old and still the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. It's been used continuously since it was built. It was first a Roman temple, and then in 609 AD it was converted to a Christian church. In ancient Rome, marble sculpture was refined to its highest degree, and mosaic art developed a sophistication never before seen. Mosaics are still made today, and at the small workshop of Nadia Ridolfini, students from around the world come to learn how. L'attività che io svolgo è quella di eh, insegnare il mosaico, il mosaico di tradizione romana è fatto con le tessere di marmo. Si usa prevalentemente il marmo. Her workshop is filled with accomplished works by other students, so I'm feeling a little nervous. We start by cutting the marble. Questa è la martellina, questo è il tagliolo e lo strumento per tagliare è solo questo. Fin dai tempi dei tempi. Allora devi prendere la tessera e la devi porre sul tagliolo. Poi dai due colpi per sentire il suono buono e poi uno più deciso. Ta 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 pa. Ah, fatto. Per fare un mosaico ci vogliono all'incirca una piccola così almeno una cinquantina di tessere, 50, 50 tessere, per cui ci vuole eh, diciamo un numero di persone enorme per poter fare un piccolo tratto, per cui loro se lo potevano permettere perché c'erano tanti schiavi. Noi no, noi il lavoro ce lo facciamo tutto da soli. Ok, so let's go! <laughs> Perfetto, l'ho sentito il rumore. <ride> ok? Allora, adesso su tutta la superficie metti la colla. Perfetto. Allora, senti semplicemente con il polpastrello la parte più piana e la attacchi sul foglio. Importante è che le tessere non siano appiccicate, ma che siano leggermente separate. Ok? Bisogna lavorare! L'ultima tessera. Perfetto. Allora, adesso noi faremo l'applicazione. Noi abbiamo bisogno di fare una miscela che è composta di sabbia, calce e cemento. Allora devi mettere e schiacciare bene. Ecco, l'altezza giusta è questa. Ok? Allora, io adesso ti faccio vedere quello che devi fare tu, eh. Devi avvicinare questi due sì, lati. Eh. Allora, si usa questo. Ok. Ok? Not bad for a first try, I guess. <laughs> but I suppose there is always room for improvement. The streets of Rome are alive, pulsing with beauty, both young and old. And sometimes it feels like Fellini's circus has never left. The best way to soak it all in is to walk through the twisting side streets and small piazzas with a very important accessory. Not a camera, a gelato. Romans love gelato, and they need no excuse to indulge. But beware, imposters are everywhere. 
They can be recognized by their improbably fluffy displays and unnatural colors. The real gelato, however, is a revelation. Made from the freshest ingredients, that is a jolt of flavor and sensation. At the Gelateria del Teatro, the art of gelato is taken very seriously. Here we have some of the ingredients we use to make the gelato. We use uh, fresh fruit, for example, very good kiwi from Sicily. We also do some gelato with uh, herbs, like uh, the Garden Sage Raspberry, which is maybe our most popular flavor. Uh, we have basil, we have mint, pistachio from Bronte, very expensive pistachio, but we like to use uh, the best ingredients we can. This is, this is the best. Today we're gonna make clementine sorbet. Clementine, water, and sugar, those are the ingredients. We have few ingredients because we want you to feel like you were eating the real food. First, we're gonna mix the liquid ingredients. This is 30% of water and 70% of fruit. That's why our ice cream is very tasty, because uh, we like intense flavors. Now I'm gonna add the uh, sugar. We usually use regular sugar and powdered sugar, both. If we only use pow powdered sugar, the ice cream will, will be uh, too soft. So we use this mix of sugar. Okay, mix is ready and now we're gonna put it in the machine. We have to wait 10 minutes more or less and the ice cream is gonna be ready. Okay, can you hear the beat? And gelato is ready. Look at this. <laughs> it's ready. Mm. After watching this mouth-watering demonstration, I sampled the flavor. Unbelievable. That is really good. Mm. You can taste the pumpkin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. If you think contemporary Roman culture is limited to a great new flavor of gelato, you're just not looking in the right place. Rome is a modern city filled with millions of people expressing themselves in many different ways. I met with one of them, the internationally recognized street artist Felice Pasquini. An artist who is painting in the street, we usually call street artist because we needed a, a name for it. I'm born in Rome, and uh, since when I was very young, I was thinking I would be a painter. I was in art high school, so I was painting the models and all these classical things. Uh, Hip-hop culture was exploding in Italy. I was discovering a new culture, a new way to live uh, the art and the city. And this was more uh, real and more close to my idea of art than uh, what I was uh, learning at school. I grew up with the idea of uh, art like uh, a way to re-give life to things. So I'm not interested to paint a white canvas, I'm not interested to paint a white walls. I'm more interested to paint of a rusty electric box that is there and the city is not caring. Artists like Alice and others are adding a modern layer to an ancient city, but she is careful to work only where invited. For me, a person who's writing on a Roman column is an idiot. She also distinguishes between street art and graffiti, which is typically just a stylized signature. The difference is in the motivation. An artist who wants to paint in the street because he needs to work on a space, in a context, is different of somebody who wants to write his name. I think art should be public. I think what is interesting is when a person is facing something in a place and is enjoying it this moment. I think street art is ephemeral and some of my paintings are even nicer when the, the surface is going with more rust and the color is going. My rule is always painting something that can only exist on that wall. That means that I paint with the color that is already on the wall. It's important to me to integrate my art in what is already 60. 
That's mean that I will never paint the same thing in Singapore or uh, in Moscow. Alice's vibrant art is tuned into the world as it is now. Her Rome is modern, international, and youthful. But at the sumptuous Palazzo Brancaccio, the contemporary world is left far behind for the pomp and elegance of the 18th and 19th centuries. Founded 25 years ago by Nino Graziano Luca, the Compagnia Nazionale di Danza Storica is dedicated to preserving European classical dances. For Nino, these are not historical artifacts. They are much, much more. I found uh, joy in uh, this dance, joy of life. The group organizes grand balls in Rome three to four times a year, and the connections between the members go well beyond the music and dance. <laughs> we love sweet life. We love romanticism. And uh, we think that uh, when you go out of this door, there is uh, not this kind of situation. At the beginning of a grand ball, there is the Polonaise. Followed by a waltz. dances of the Compania evoke another era, hey! when romance and beauty were the highest ideals. The group is a kind of antidote to contemporary life, an escape, but also a real parallel universe. We can uh, live uh, this magic experience together. You can find these special things in our world, and we hope that it become the world. I couldn't agree more. Grazie per un bellissimo salato. <laughs> Grazie. <laughs> Grazie. <laughs> what makes Rome such a magical city? Was it destiny that these seven hills would become the home of the greatest empire the world has ever known? Is there something in the abundant natural springs that still flow today? Some elixir that drove the ancient Romans to conquer and create? To these questions, there is only one answer. Come to Rome and find out for yourself. Drink the water, eat the food, and breathe the air. There is only one Rome.